Welcome to this video about Advanced Figma Tips and Tricks 2024 by MoonLearning.io. MoonLearning is an online learning platform for UX, UI and Figma. In this video are some takeouts of little hidden gems that you can find throughout the courses. Let's jump right in with the first one. Did you know that you can open Figma right in VS Code? Toggle on Dev Mode and now click on the three little dots and you can open the VS Code extension. You can now inspect any Figma file right in the development environment just as you would in Dev Mode. Toggle Dev Mode with Shift and D. While the Dev Mode toggle is really handy, you can optimize your workflow by using the shortcut Shift and D. Quickly toggle between fixed and auto spacing. In an auto layout setup, you can use the spacing drop down to change from a fixed spacing to auto, also called space between. To speed up your workflow, simply click on the alignment menu or use the shortcut Command and X to toggle between fixed and auto. With Command and B, you can also toggle the align text space line. This is a setting otherwise found in the advanced menu. Variable scoping in bulk. Hold shift press to select a bunch of variables, right click and choose edit variables. You can now set the scoping for all of those variables at once. So that means if you want them to only show up, for example, for text color or for fills. Quickly create variables with a shortcut shift enter. With any existing variable, simply press shift enter and it's gonna make a copy. You can then rename them and little extra tip, hold shift pressed and then use the up and down key and any value will increase or decrease by your set nudge amount. Alias variables. Simply right click any value and select create alias. This way you can reference variables from another collection, which is really handy if you want to set up primitives and semantic collections in your design system. With the Styles to Variables Converter, you can quickly transform your existing styles into variables with just one click while preserving all connections across files. If you have your design set up with styles, then jump to the library where you saved the original styles, run the Styles to Variables plugin, and this will now attach a variable in addition to your styles. Make sure to update the library and then jump back to any design file using this library and make sure to run the update. You will now see the style as well as the new variable attached to this value. Jump back to your library once you're sure you updated everything and you can simply delete the styles. This will leave your design files just with the variables. Some Boolean variables magic. Boolean variables are quite a hidden feature, but you can set up little magic tricks like this. First, I set up a collection with two modes. In my example, I use one for smaller and a larger screen, and then Boolean variables. One for a burger menu, I want to show on a smaller screen and switch off for a larger one, and the other way around for a links menu. Now I set up my component and I package all elements in there, so the burger menu as well as the links menu. Now comes the weird part. In order to connect them, you have to right click the eye on the layers panel. Let's do the same for the links, right click the eye, connect to the variable. And now if you drag this instance onto any frame that has a preset mode, it's gonna switch on and off the booleans. In the past, consuming components set up with variants and properties from a library was a bit tricky as the different versions were not so obvious. But we can now use the variant and props playground to solve this. Simply click on any component in the assets panel and you can then see the different variants and you can also play with the components and even alter the content. Reset prototypes. This is actually quite an obvious one, but I didn't know about this. Simply press R and you can reset any prototype. And to get an in file preview, you can also use the shortcut shift and spacebar. Since June 23, we can add min and max values to an auto layout setup. You might have used this for your components already, but I quite like adding it to my parent frames representing the viewport. This way I can set up breakpoints and communicate them clearly. And by the way, you can also use variables. Hold and slide to lock all layers. Really simple but effective, making sure nobody overrides your components where you don't want them to. Hold down a mouse key and just slide to lock. Now these two shortcuts are quite old, but it's the one I use most. Alt and L and you can collapse all the open layers. 
And then by pressing enter, you can go down the tree of hierarchy by selecting the nearest children. Multiple grids within a single grid style. If you save a grid as a style, then you're just going to see that single grid. But with properties, you can add another grid to it. So you can have two grids, for example, a row and a column grid within one grid style. Using prototyping flow links to create better overviews. I'm not sure if you noticed, but every flow you create in Figma has its own link. You can copy this link and you can paste it anywhere inside or outside of Figma to link to this prototype. This is super handy to show how components work or just link between different prototypes. Presentations with scrollable prototypes. Set up a scrollable prototype. Make sure that you have it set to vertical and any fixed elements to fixed. And you can then simply drag that frame onto your presentation. You can add some more links between your presentation screens and then simply hit preview and you're going to have a scrollable presentation ready for an amazing demo. Set rules for slot components. With auto layout and instance swapping, we can create slot components. A nice little extra when doing so is to set preferred values. This way we can quickly highlight to anyone using this component which elements are intended to be used. Simple but handy, clean up your files by pressing Command and Y. This will give you a wireframe and it's much easier to find any elements that you might have copied by accident and clean up your file. Copy as PNG without exporting. This one has also been around for some time, but I can't get enough of it. I use it all the time. Press Command, Shift and C to copy the frame as a PNG to your clipboard. You can now paste it anywhere inside or outside of your file. This is super handy to create mockups, but also to quickly share ideas in emails or via Slack. Use percentage for line height. In Figma, line height is typically set in pixels. I personally prefer using generic units like in CSS, such as 1.5. Although you cannot set CSS units directly, you can use percentages. This approach allows for changing the font size while maintaining a unified line height. And by the way, in dev mode, you'll see pixels, but you can switch over to RAM as well. Variables or styles. Hopefully I can clean this one up soon because at the time I'm recording this, we're still waiting for typography variables to be released. So for now. Everything that is a value, like a size, a color, a radius, is a variable. So always use that for a single value. As soon as it combines into a set of values, for example, an effect like a shadow that has a color, but it also has a blur value, then we will be using a style. So I'm not sure what typography variables are going to bring, but it's probably going to be a style, but we're going to have the option to have things like line height and size set as variables. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. There is more coming. Also make sure to visit moolearning.io where you find all my courses on UX, UI and Figma.